Hi everybody, Mike here from K2. It's been a good month now since we've had these boards and sadly the conditions in the UK have not been brilliant and uh, that is why we've taken so long to get this review up and on the site. Um, the chromatic range released uh, earlier this year, um, some beautiful colorways and some major updates right the way through the range. So we thought we'd get every single board out and test them against the old ones, uh, find out exactly what this range feels like to ride really and, and where its strengths are and for who it's suited in, in various corners. A quick word about sizing for the chromatic range. The dimensions of the boards have changed this year slightly. If you're looking for the equivalent board in the chromatic range to the boards that we saw last year, please only think about the width. The width controls the size. So the Ronson, this is one of the most popular boards in the range for the last few years, and, and rightly so. It's quite unique in the range in that uh, it's quite rail oriented. To put that edge in the water makes the board come alive and you're very aware that to really get the Ronson to, to sing you really need to make use of that edge. The board has had a completely new hull design um, with new channeling in the centre of the board and new tip channels at the top. The board compared to last year's it's definitely a performance upgrade. There's more range uh, through low end to top end and there's a little bit more grip as well and a little bit more ease of grip um, I would say also. Um, it's not as demanding to stick and engage and, and keep that rail pushing. It's a lovely board the Ronson. It's been one of our best selling twins for years now and this one definitely takes that a little bit further with the same character of board. It shines really well in flat water conditions where you can make the most of that edge. Um, it's got incredible efficiency and drive up wind. It's got a lot of um, power handling ability as well when it really comes to it. The Ronson's not a difficult board to ride in, in any sense of the, the, the word really. Um, it's very compliant. Uh, it teaches you a lot about rails and rail control, but it's very, very smooth and, and very accessible. So the Pinbot, what a beautiful looking board it is this year. Um, of all the new designs, I really think this is my firm favorite. The Pinbot shares the same technology as all the other boards. And so um, please don't think that it's a uh, cheap entry point into the range because uh, there's just as much production cost goes into this as everything else. 3D deck, um, single concave hull. There's uh, certainly no scrimping on the design. The shape has been around for a few years now. Um, it uses quite a, a square edged outline. It has a lot of low end drive, uh, a lot of upwind ability, but it also has a lot of flex and that brings a lot of stability to the board, a lot of um, ease of use, especially when you start cranking power in. As such, it's very versatile and very forgiving for uh, intermediate riders, certainly, uh, and those people wanting, wanting good range uh, in a board. It's not got the same channel technology and it's not got quite as much of a, um, a curved outline to it. So it is a little bit compromised in carving and uh, sustained high power usage. But, you know, it's a very, very nice board to ride. It's super smooth. Um, there's not really a lot you can do wrong with this thing. Um, and it does forgive a great deal. Now on to the Bronc. Now the Bronc also shares the Ronson's new mould this year. Unique in the range in that it has a combination core. It has a Paulovnia and Balsa core. It's again the only carbon board in the range um, and the costings of it are as much down to the amount of time that it spends on the C CNC as it, to the actual material cost of the thing as well. It is quite an expensive board to make. And traditionally it's been a very easy plush board to ride but the key thing about this year is its performance ability is quite frankly staggering. You take this board out compared to everything else, do one tack out to sea, come back in again and you'll be astounded at how early it goes, how quick it goes and how well upwind it goes. Um, it is quite something really when you compare it to the, to the other boards. 
and it's not like the other boards are particular slouchers they're incredibly good at what they do but this thing's it's on another level the other really odd thing about it is it's not a rail centric board it's not like you have to drive it and really power it to make it do what it does it is insanely easy to use i mean a beginner could use it you could turn up to the racetrack blind drunk and still set the fastest time of the day it takes very little skill to get an extraordinarily large amount of performance out of this thing if there's something that the other boards do better than the bronc in the range i'd say um, boards like the monk and the um, ronson have a bit more feel to them it's um, a, a funny thing some people just like a car that just performs they don't want to know how or why they just want to know it goes and it goes like a stabbed rat this is that um, it's not got the most finesse and the most feeling of any of the boards it kind of just bends mother nature and physics to serve its end and you don't get as much feeling back from it but some people don't want that they just want to be the fastest they want to have the biggest range and they want to have all of the potential instabilities ironed out and that is the bronc it just makes mincemeat of anything that it goes near really interestingly choppier conditions suit it better than flat water it loses its advantage a little bit in butter flat offshore conditions but in rough choppy seas that are potentially marginal this thing just stomps all over everything else right the ADHD. Um, I rode this board pretty much all of last year, uh, where I ride it's normally uh, very flat water, very windy, and uh, chosen disciplines big air much of the time, so this is the board that fits the bill. This year it's a little bit longer than its size, um, otherwise the mould is the same, new graphics. Um, and the one thing that I would say about this board, it's got more rocker and, and more sidewall thickness to it than anything else is that it does require a slightly higher level of general power for for normal riding but by christ is the thing grip um, the first thing you notice is that just normal riding is barely even scratching the surface of what this thing's capable of gripping against and you try and give it a bit more bite give it a bit more power and edge against it and see what it does and oh it's just absolutely planted in the water the tension you can get through the lines is is incredible and that just keeps going and going and going and going until um, you reach frankly crazy levels of power usage you can see why it's so popular as a big airboard um, I mean freestyle wise um, with bindings on uh, the carved pop you get from it using all that bite is immense really and the extra rocker and, and the outline that it has it is unique in the range at being able to st uh, stick the nastiest fastest most out of control landings in pretty bad water states nothing else in the range can can land um, as well as this thing can um, i've had this board through a few of our team riders and although the spec hasn't really changed much from last year everybody's telling me that this new model does seem to hold a bit more bite than it did last year and I would agree um, the the grip levels of this thing have gone seem to have gone up a notch a little bit as well but uh, for anything to do with the top end power usage in the range if you're using a lot of power all the time and that's where your riding seems to um, seems to settle then uh, the ADHD is the absolute kitty of that trick for sure so here we have the slicer this is Shin's split board now uh, we came at this through a unique way of joining these two boards together to maintain the flex profile right the way through the board and uh, this represents a new tack at trying to solve the problem with split boards in that they tend to over stiffen where the junction is now as far as riding this board on the water goes i genuinely cannot tell if it's a split board or not the um, flex patterns it feels exactly the same as a normal board um, you are aware that it's a tiny bit heavier it does have a thicker um, rail edge to it here where the, the connection is um, and there is a bit more physical weight to it generally uh, the outline is quite a compliant it's it's closer to 
Monk um, and ADHD, I would say, than the more rail-edged oriented boards. Quite happy sailing flat or, or you know, severely railed over. Um, it's very compliant in terms of carving. Rail-to-rail -rail ability is excellent on it. It's fantastic in waves just slashing around. Um, as far as um, bite for pop and sort of uh, big air, it's certainly got a lot of stability when you're pushing the levels, uh, the power levels up, but it doesn't have the same sort of um, raw bite and, and, and hookup that you can get with some of the other boards. That's not to say that um, it's an uninvolving an and, and, and boring board to ride. It, it's actually really quite pleasant. And last year when I, I tested it in flat water, um, you really can wind the thing up and, and throw and rag it around. So, um, you know, if you, if you need a, a board that does split in two and you can get it, the whole thing into a backpack, um, get, on the, get on the flight as and when we do get back on flights again, um, then, you know, this is uh, te technology wise, you know, a zero compromise option. And um, the market for them has been very strong. Here we have the new Monk Chromatic. In my mind, the Monk's a really adaptable board. Um, you can ride it fairly flat, low power, or you can really crank the juice up and really get it to bite and drive. It is efficient when you're not pushing power into it. It's controlled when you are pushing power into it. The carving on the board, it's very progressive. You don't have to really plan that rail in to, to get stability in a carve, but you can if you wish. It's just so versatile and everything you seem to throw at it, it throws fun back at you. It's a really beautiful, beautiful board to ride. And to be frank, I absolutely fell in love with this board. It is um, very light, thin rails. It feels physically lighter than the other boards to handle, but more so underfoot. It's got a uniquely brilliant level of flex that doesn't sap power. It gives it back, but it, forgives a lot of the inherent instability in the water in choppy conditions. It's not rail oriented per se. You don't have to get that rail in all the time to make it work. It's quite happy at moderate to high angles of bite. You don't really have to commit to it 100% all the time. But when you do commit to it, that rail bite and that knife edge is available on tap. And you really can wind this thing up it just has so much life and so much energy to it, encouraging you to push your own limits and, and, and just be playful and, and enjoy your time on the water. Um, the ADHD can certainly outpower it when it's really, really windy. The Ronson is a lot more belt and braces, you know, stick your rail in and, and, and um, drive, drive the power into it. It's much more sort of hands-on sports car kind of feel. The Bronc is physically faster and more capable in terms of its performance, raw performance, in any given condition, but the Monk just gives you the biggest smile on your face. It's the one board in this test that I've taken out and come back and thought, oh, do you know, I'm going to go back in and get that again. It is addictive to ride in the conditions that we were using it in. And to be honest, it is my favourite of the entire range this year. Well, although this video started um, with the intention of keeping it short, it has sort of overrun somewhat and I apologise, but I hope it's given you some insight into how these boards feel underfoot. They're all very, very different and uh, they're all exceptional boards in their own right. Yes, some appeal to uh, different people, different conditions, but I'm hoping that you will have some idea of how these things sit within your sphere and your sport and your conditions.